and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio with a new video on stencil making. So I am in my stencil making 2.0 series. I will put a link down below if you have not watched the previous series, which was stencil making 101. I actually covered quite a bit of basics and I have filled up my first binder. So if you haven't watched any of those, I would start here if you have no experience with stencil making because I kind of show you some ideas if you don't have a cutting machine. These were all made with my Cricut Maker and this is all just basic repeating designs. Uh, lots of different ways to do that using Cricut Design Space. I know the other cutting machines, Silhouette has their own design space and they all kind of work similarly. So even if you have a different type of machine, I think this tutorial series would be great for you. And lots of different ideas and one of them that we covered, I've started a second binder that is actually getting quite full. This was also part of Stencil Making 101 using text for obvious type of stencils, but then also using text fonts, different fonts to create all of these designs. All of these were done just using text, if you can believe that. So those are a lot of fun. Uh, check them out. And again, those were in Stencil Making 101. Then I moved into using other types of software. These were all done using your word processing program, whichever one you have. Also PowerPoint, I think you can do the same kind of thing. So uh, we did some kind of fun, different shapes, um, warping them and that sort of thing using a word processing program. So now I'm gonna be moving into using Procreate. I know that some of you from the introduction, I showed some Asemic writing and that's uh, what I, I used Procreate to do all of these, including all of my doodles. So that's why I uh, decided to use my iPad uh, and Procreate, which you can just download from the App Store. I think mine was about $12.99 inflation. It could be up a little more than that, but I've only had it for a month or so. So Procreate from your App Store. And so today I'm going to show you super, super basic from the beginning because I am just brand new to Procreate. And in case you're just downloading it for the first time, I want you to be able to make a stencil right off the bat using just uh, your basic drawing tools and we really don't have to know too much because we're just using black and white we're not procreates a pixel based graphic design program where you can do actual artwork and colors and gradients and all that sort of you know shading and highlighting and really fancy color blending we're not going to be doing that because we're just using it for the purpose of being able to organically draw something instead of taking you know, shapes that are already there and then adjusting those like we've been doing. We want to just be able to freehand whatever we want and create a stencil out of it. So again, you'll be able to take your design that you make here and hand cut it out. But for that matter, you might as well, if you're good at drawing, you can just draw them with a, a thick marker and get the same thing. The nice thing about using a computer program to do that is you can correct yourself and fine tune it, make it look really good, and then import it into uh, your cutting machine design software and be able to have your machine cut it. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've just done a couple to show you, super simple, just to get used to using the Apple Pencil. So these are just kind of some swirly, again, designs where everything's connected. So the white space, this would be my drawn line. The white space is what, cut, what was cut out. When we do some uh, other designs later on, we can also create designs that that's the part that's cut out. So, you know, stencil versus mask sort of thing, which is kind of what this ends up being. So I'm gonna put those aside and I'm right in here, let's get back. When you first go into Procreate, this is what it looks like. So in your app store, look for that little um, label there. And we're gonna go back to our gallery. So when you first open up the program, let me see if I can get in here a little quick. So when you first open the Procreate, you get this gallery and I already have some artwork in here. When you create a piece of artwork, it will automatically save it when you click on gallery and that's in the next screen I'll show you but you don't have to actually save anything it will save automatically when it does that it's saved as untitled artwork so if you want to give that a title you would just click on it like I just did it would bring up this where you can type in the letters or you can actually just write it in here so we're going to call this 
swirly two because I think I already have a swirly one. Okay, and then down here there's a little arrow. We'll click on that and it will take us back to the gallery and now it has its name. Okay, uh, the other thing that you can do is if you click on select, it will put a little dot here and you can select different ones. This was an untitled one. Let's say I, I want to do these four because they're all swirly and I can put those in a stack and now those are in one file folder. We're going to call it a file folder, but it's a stack. So that's a stack of papers. I don't know if there's a way to unstack it. I kind of played around with a couple of uh, pretend draft ones to see and you can delete the stack, but it deletes the whole stack completely. It doesn't, it just doesn't break up the stack. So make sure when you choose things that you group together, that you really wanted them grouped together. They don't go anywhere. Once you click on that, oh, I think I have to get out of here first. Click on that. Now I'm back to my gallery. I have my stack. If I click on that, I can see each individual thing that's in that stack. Okay. So if I click on stack again, it takes me back to my main page of my gallery. So that's what I've done here. It's just a way to organize once you have a whole bunch of like items, it's kind of nice to put them in a pile or maybe you're working on multiple drawings in a certain project, that kind of thing. Okay, we won't worry about import a photo right now. We don't need that. Um, to create a blank canvas, you're gonna just click on this plus sign and you can create a new canvas. Now they have already uh, some default sizes, including paper, which is 11 by eight and a half, uh, which is what I mostly use. I can go ahead, there is an untitled that I started to create that was an eight by 10. To do that, you just click on this little uh, plus sign there and you can plug in any dimensions in millimeter, centimeter, inches, or pixels and create your own custom size canvas, uh, which I just now created a fake one which I didn't really want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna select this and delete it since I didn't really want to do that. And I selected it, clicked on delete, and it gives me a second choice so I don't accidentally delete something I didn't want to, and now it's gone forever. Okay, so let's try that again. We're gonna get out of that. Now I'm back to my original gallery. Click on the plus. I'm just gonna create a paper size eight and a half by 11 or 11 by eight and a half because it's going uh, horizontal. So to start, I'm gonna work on an eight and a half by 11 because I am doing stencils that are eight by 10. I could create, like I said, the eight by 10 and then send it and do the frame and all that. But I don't, I kind of like in my own brain feeling like this is a piece of paper and I leave a little margin around if I want it to be eight by 10. Uh, that's just how I like to work. Now, the first thing you have to kind of figure out is you can work on your paper this way, but maybe you like working on it the other direction and you don't want to be turning your iPad all the time. So use two fingers and you kind of have to give it a little pressure and pin. Uh, if you don't give it enough pr pressure and you're on here, you might accidentally be drawing with your finger. So you give it a little pressure and you can kind of turn it and you can zoom in and out as you're working on something just by that two finger pinching thing, okay? So I kind of like to lay it like I would a piece of paper. Okay, now your pencil, one thing that I'm gonna maybe show right up front because I don't wanna forget is your pencil actually kind of works like a regular pencil, but it has this flat edge and there's actually a thing where if you happen to just be thinking and you're tapping on your pencil, it's not going to do it on mine because I've turned it off, but normally it defaults at if you tap this twice, it's going to toggle between whatever tool you're on and an eraser. It's going to toggle back and forth between these two. Okay, so this one is your brush or your pencil, and this one is the eraser. I'm going to show you real quick how to turn that off because I kept doing it and I didn't even know how I was doing it or how to, how to stop doing it. So I'm going to get out of this for a second. I'm just going to swipe up and you go to your settings on your iPad and you're gonna go down, scroll down until you find your Apple Pencil right here. Click on that and you see here, it's showing you that the double tap is gonna either, you have choices, it, it defaults at this one, which is switch between current tool and eraser. You can do current tool and last one, color palette or ink attributes. I just turn it off and now I don't have to worry about if I tap with this I'm not accidentally doing something. 
So that's per that's done. I don't have to switch back. So let me go back into Procreate. I'm back on my paper. Now, there are a few tools up here and this little toolbar here and then some tools over here. I'm going to show you just the ones that we really need to use today. I might show you a couple of other little tips and tricks because I figured out on my own how to basically draw something, but I kept doing things I didn't know what I was doing or how I was doing it, and I've now figured those out. So I thought I would share those with you as I go to, just so you're not as confused as I was when I first started. So one thing that you can do is, if you're left-handed, this is on the right, or on the left side now, and it's actually normally in the middle. And I'm gonna see if I can actually do it with my pen. I, I'm not really good at, see if I can swipe that, there. Okay, it's, it's not easy to do, especially when you're not used to doing this. And so I'm happy that you're going to kind of see my stumbling around because I don't want you to be discouraged. Some of the things, it's a tap. Some of it, it's a touch more. And you kind of have to just get the feel of that. This one is a really hard one. But I kind of slid my finger to pull this away from the edge. And you do it right there in that black spot in the middle. But it will allow you to move this up or down just in case you want it out of your way. It starts out here. Um, and I just move mine up and I kind of leave it there. If you want to move that to the other side because you're left-handed, you can click on this little tool. And right now I'm in share because that's the last thing I did. Preferences, let's go there because that's where this comes into play. You can change the light interface. That's a personal preference. Right now, everything is dark around and this is dark. You can change that if you like to have it be light. I prefer working when it's dark. So I leave that off. The other thing you can do is if you are left-handed and you want this to be over there, you just click on that and it will move that there. So you might want to switch that right away. Again, once you have that on, it's going to stay there. So I'm going to put mine back where it was. The other thing you might want to turn on is the dynamic brush scaling. And that will come into play as you get further along and uh, you are maybe doodling or that kind of thing, and you want your lines to be consistent to what you've set your pen size. So I have that turned on, and I'll show you what it does here in a second. Let me, I don't think I need anything else on here done, so we're just going to click on that again and get rid of it. So the dynamic brush scaling, actually, let me go back and turn it off so you can see the difference. Let me turn it off. If I have, I have a brush selected and I have a size here, and I'm going to make a line, and I'm going to make another line, and then say I want to zoom in and make another line, and then I want to zoom in some more, and I want to make another line. When I go back out, look at the scale of my lines. It made it smaller because I was zoomed in, so it was making it this thick, but zoomed in, so when I zoomed back out, it's a skinny line. If you want your lines to be consistent and be able to zoom in and out, then you want to turn on that dynamic scale, brush scaling. So what'll happen now is if I do that again and draw a line, zoom in and draw a line, and zoom in and draw a line, then when I zoom at, back out, they're all the same size line. So you might wanna turn that on at the beginning too for the kinds of things that we're doing. Okay, now let's see what else we need to know how to do here. This little, slider here if you can see that dot that is the size of your brush okay and it gives you a percentage number when you're tapped on it but sometimes you're working with something and then you maybe switch a brush or you change the size or do something and you liked that first size and you don't remember what size you had it at what you can do is i have these two little dash lines there i can get rid of those just to show you Let's click on that one. If I have just, say I'm here, and that's where I want my line, and I don't wanna forget that, but I wanna try a bigger one. If I click on that, oops, I already moved it. I click on the plus, it'll put me that little dash line there. And then if I scale it up a little bit and see how I like that line, and maybe I want it even bigger, I like that one. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna, click the plus again and it put that dash mark there. So I am able to do that as many times as I want and save those different sizes. That way if I wanna go back and forth, maybe I wanna do a skinny line and then maybe I wanna go back and do a thick line, I have those saved. Those will stay there until I get rid of them from artwork to artwork. So 
if you you know want to get rid of them you can but you might kind of find when you're doing stencils you may find that you have a certain couple of sizes for your particular brush that you really have found that that works good for that whole positive negative space that we talk about when we're trying to make a stencil so once you kind of find that for your brush then uh, you might want to save those there okay the other thing this does and we don't need this but i'll show you anyway is if you're working with something that's colored if you click on this you'll get this little circle which is this little circle and it's identifying that color so say i had blue or a light blue and i wanted to save that to my color palette or something that's the tool that i would use to get it up here uh, we're using black and white so we really don't need to know that but in case you're curious okay so this slider here is opacity again we don't need this this is if you're doing artwork and you're wanting it to you know be more opaque or translucent that kind of thing we're just going to have it be all the way up because we're just doing black and white lines okay this one here is an undo and you can see every time i click it it undoes just the last thing that i did okay if you do too far and you want to go back you can bring it back with the redo but redo now there's another way to do that with just finger taps so if i want to undo i do two finger taps and it'll do these one at a time. If I want to redo it, I tap three fingers and it brings them back one at a time. If I want to scroll through those faster and get rid of them, but maybe not clear the whole thing, I can do two fingers and hold them down. Let's see if it does it here. Now it's making a liar out of me. There. If I do them and hold them, it made you saw a couple go away fast. Now it's not doing it. There's two more. If you hold three fingers down and hold them there, it'll bring them back. Okay, so again, I don't use that very much. That's why I have not figured out exactly the touch that, it, that works well. Okay, that was going away. I don't know it's a weird deal see instead i'm actually drawing on it with my fingers so i don't really like that one very much okay so that's this toolbar now the ones we really need to know are really the pen and the eraser okay it looks like a brush but that's your pencil um, and this is your brush library it comes with default brushes you can add new brushes we don't need to do that right now i'm going to share with you just for what we're going to do my two favorite brushes for stencil making and they are both found in calligraphy now i had them in my recents and i'm going to kind of show you how i did how you can save those if i go in calligraphy i find monoline which i like and i find script which i like now if you click on that that's going to be the brush that i have i like this one because it has rounded ends and this one is thicker but it has um, a sharper end you can adjust things within your brush by clicking on the brush and it brings you to some different things that you can change about it. I don't play around this with too, with this too much except for stabilization I like. The one thing that you might want to adjust in this is um, you can play around with this is stabilization because if I don't have it on any, if I want to do like a line and say I'm drawing and I'm not drawing it, I'm not able to draw it perfectly straight if I do this stabilization and pull that up, it kind of drags it in. You see how it's dragging it around? See how it's kind of dragging, but it makes it kind of a, a smoother thing. Uh, you might just kind of figure out where you might like that. And I kind of put it around 30%, I think, is where I kind of I feel comfortable. So that's just kind of playing around with it. Um, you can play around with motion filtering and that sort of thing. You know, that kind of makes it be a smooth, smooth line. But see how it, it behaves? You're going to have to, especially with like doodling, figuring out what you and what you like, how it's how it's working, how that brush is working. So let's just be done with that one and it's set how it is. You can do the same thing with your script brush. See, I have stabilizations up a little bit. Um, and you can, you know, up these a little bit if you want. So that's um, just about your brushes. If you want to make adjustments, 
as you practice and play around, you can do that. So those two brushes are set how I have them set until I were to reset them, okay? So they'll stay that way. So those are my two favorite brushes. Uh, up here is Recent. Once you've had something in Recent, you can uh, kind of put a star by it, by pinning it. So if I swipe to the left, it gives me, it's pinned already so I can unpin it. Um, but So it's still there, but it's unpinned. So I can go back and I can pin it. And then the other thing you can do is, if you couldn't remember which category it was under, you can go to find and it'll show you the other brushes in that same category. So that's just a way to save your brushes, your favorite ones, especially doing what we're doing. We're doing just some one specific task. I did not do this the first time. And when I was doing the Japanese calligraphy, Islamic writing, you wanted a certain kind of uh, taper at the end of your brush. And you'll see that when we get to that one. But I didn't pay attention to, I didn't know about this thickness of my brush or anything. And I didn't remember which brush I used. So I had to kind of go figure it out again. So my point is, if you find a brush you like, make sure you go back to Recents because that's where you need to find it to pin it. And then it'll be, it'll always stay there. Okay. So that's your brush. And then this is a smudge tool. I don't use that. This is the eraser. Uh, you don't have to, this is the color. You don't have to like change that to white for it to be the eraser. It's just going to erase whatever color you have. So here I have my line and now I can click to the eraser and I can erase part of my line. If I want to adjust the size of that eraser, I can do that. If I want to get in here so I can really see the pixels and not erase too much. See, my eraser is really big. So see where my pencil is? That's, it's huge. But I can make this much smaller and kind of really get in there and just erase just the tiniest bit. Okay, so that is my eraser tool. So those are really for what we're gonna be doing. Those are really the only two tools that we wanna use. Um, the other one here is layers. When we get into more complicated things, we may want to have multiple layers as we work. I'm not gonna deal with that today. It works the same as really kind of any other graphics program when you work in layers. So we'll, we'll deal with that later. So we're gonna get out of that. And then this is just your color palette. We also are not gonna use our color palette because we're just doing black and white, but I wanna show it to you because there are actually different types of palettes that all work a little bit differently. And we won't get into that. It defaults, I believe, at this disc. And it you do have a history here when you've changed your colors and played with colors. If for some reason this gets turned to something else, you look up here and say some reason, somehow, it got changed to another color. Like sometimes it'll get changed to white and you'll be drawing and you're not seeing anything and you're thinking it's not working, but it is. See, I just went over my black. It's working, it's just that it's white. And so you just wanna go back and change it to black. And then you have your pen there. So sometimes if you're, if you're Pencil doesn't look to be working, look up there and it might be what, because that's white. So it, it, it just keep it black and we're good. Okay, so let's clear this design. Another way, there's a couple of ways to clear your, your paper. Um, one is to go into layers. You see, I've done everything on this one layer. Swipe it left and hit clear. The other thing is if you tap over here, it, you get a menu that also says clear. I think swiping left and doing clear is the fastest way. Um, the other way you can you can uh, do it is, I'm not good at this, but if you do three fingers, lay them down and rub fast, and see it didn't do it, there you go, it cleared that layer. I'm not as good at, at that. Sometimes it's faster for me because I'm not good at that is to go to layers and hit clear. So that will just clear your entire paper and you could start all over instead of having to erase the whole thing. So um, that's that's just the basics that we need to know to do these first simple designs. So the first one we're gonna do is, again, the type of stencil where everything needs to be touching each other. If we created a line like this, if we did this, our stencil would cut out 
just the black areas. And so that would be our stencil. So you can create a stencil like that. You can go and make a bunch of circles like this. And that could be your stencil. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to get in this one into shapes. I think I'll do that in the next video uh, because that could take a little bit longer. And I mostly want you to get used to using your pencil just to figure out the thickness that you want and that sort of thing. Pencil and eraser. Just use those two to do these first couple of simple ones. And then in the next video, I'm going to get into more of quick shapes how to move those and play with those a little bit and some other things that make uh, creating designs pretty quick and fun. So this one we're just going to do just really kind of scribble drawing, okay? So if I were to do this, this all these things would be cut out and that would be my stencil. So I'm going to clear that layer. And the type that we're going to do today though is where everything's connected so when your stencil is cut out, all the white is gone. And what is left behind is the black lines, which is more like a mask. And then, uh, so one that's just super easy and fun is just to do like a grid pattern. And, you know, you can make a grid on any kind of program, but this is fun because I can adjust the thicknesses and wigglinesses of my line. I can make it thicker by pushing a little harder and then thinner. Um, I'm going back and forth and off the paper just because I want my edge. You know, I should maybe go a little thicker as I get to this edge so that I don't have any really skinny weird parts. But I'm going to put a frame around this in Cricut Design Space. Uh, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. And I can always crop it. So let's just make some squiggly things just to get used to my pen. I'm holding it really at the end to be more uncontrolled about it. Uh, you know, just a little more pressure here or there, just back and forth, skinny ones and thick ones. And I'm keeping attention to, uh, I want it to be squiggly, but I'm kind of paying attention to them being spaced so that I don't end up with too tiny of spaces. So I'm going to go the same thing and go the other way and just up and down, change the pressure that you have and just keeping an eye like those will be some kind of skinny spaces, but that's okay. I want my, you know, I could do them all cl closer together. Now I accidentally touched those two. May not be the end of the world, but if I don't want that, I can just go back and fix that. Okay, so I'm going to just continue on here. Now we have our, our finished design, and we would then be sending it to our Cricut Maker and cutting it out. So I think I'll do that maybe after the next one let me get rid of this and show you just another couple of things here and then we'll send it over to the computer okay so now we have a clean paper and let's do that kind of swirly one and again we want every line to cross over something else so that it's all kind of captured and you don't end up with any kind of loosey-goosey things so if I take another one, maybe I want to make this one smaller. Now that is going to be a tiny little hole. I don't want that that small. So I want to just kind of be more aware. Again, that is a tiny hole that maybe I want to color that in. But then maybe I don't want that big of a black spot. So, you know, maybe I redo that again. So it's just kind of paying attention to when you leave things like that. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So let's go back, do these loops. And do big enough loops so that each cutout space is a decent size. I can go back over here. Maybe I'm doing my pen a little bit lighter touch. And so it's those aren't as thick. I can go from thick to thin. You know, heavy. I'm just, I'm not changing my brush size. I'm just pushing harder. So I don't like that, so I can back that out. But that's just, you know, play around with this. Let me see about doing one where I go lighter and then heavier and lighter and heavier, just to get the feel of my pen. Okay, and then the other thing I could do is I don't have to do all the same kind of shape. I can just... Go a different direction. Now these would not be attached to each other, 
So, you know, I want to kind of attach those. Okay, so you can just, you know, doodle all you want in this kind of way to get used to how your pen works. Okay, and let's see, even just a thicker. Now that one wouldn't, I would have a gap here that these would be floppy from each other, but I really don't like how that looked. So if I do this and lift my pen, now if I do something else, let's see, I go from here. If I wanted to undo one thing, it would only undo that one thing and I haven't undone my whole design. So that's kind of nice, but I kind of don't like to leave little ends hanging there because now for this next one, I would want to make sure I covered that up. And you see, now I got that little thing. So instead, I would kind of do this and end up off a page. Okay, that way at least I don't have any random ends. So now maybe I want to go here. Maybe I want to go with a little bit of a lighter touch. And again, come off my page. Okay, so this just get get yourself used to your pen, you know, and how you how you just do some kind of random thing. So let's see if I can actually do something I would like to to actually cut out. Okay, so let's see doing something else just really organic. Okay, so that's kind of an organic, fun design. So now I want to save this and send it off to my uh, Adobe Capture to make sure all my pixelated lines are nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go here to my toolbar and I'm gonna go to share and I'm gonna share it as a PNG. You can share it as a JPEG. I'm gonna share it as a PNG. And that exported it. I'm going to save it to my photos. So just save image. Okay. Now I go back to my gallery. It's here. I could also send it from here. I believe I can hit select, select that. And I can also share from there. Same thing. Okay. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. But those are two ways that you can uh, send, share it, send it out. Okay. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go to Adobe Capture. We've done this one before. And I'm going to go down here to Import, Import Image, Import Image from my camera roll. It's going to be the last one that I just did. And there it is. I am going to just, I'm on Shapes. I'm just going to go here and click on the check mark. And I'm going to click on Smooth. Now, the other thing that you could do is if you got it here and you all of a sudden, because it's larger, noticed something that either there was a white dot or a gap or something, you can click on Refine. And it gives you a brush down here and an eraser. So if there was something I needed to clean up, I don't have to do it from Procreate. I could clean it up from here if I wanted. Okay, so, but I'm going to go to smooth. Um, smoothing is off. I'm going to turn it on. And it's going to take just a minute. And it's going to clean up all those edges. Okay, so now I'm going to click on save. Okay, so I can give it names, you know, demo. Okay, and then it would name it and save it. So it's going to save this as an SVG, if you remember. Um, and it's going to save it to my library. But then I want to go to this one here, the three dots, and I click on share. And I'm going to export it as an SVG. So I want to airdrop this to my computer. And I heard it go over. So we're going to go finish up this video on the computer. Okay, so here we are at my computer. And there is the demo that I just did. And I just drag, drag it to my 
to my desktop and I'm going to go in here to my Cricut Design Space and, and I want to upload that. Upload image, browse my desktop and there is my demo open. Now I've told you this before, don't be afraid when you see the this, it did work out fine. So even with those black spots in there, I'm going to go ahead and click on upload. Okay, and I'm going to click on that. Don't be afraid of that. And I'm going to add it to my canvas. Now it came in fine. It's just large. So we're going to go ahead and make this 8 by 10 because that's a finished size I want. Now I could go ahead and cut it out like this, but I want to put a frame around it just because otherwise all these things are going to be floppy. And so let's just go ahead and uh, add my frame. Now, one thing you can do is depending on your design, when I did the, the smaller weave ones, sometimes those are too close together or when you d turned it into an SVG, sometimes it will it will do a weird curve or a sharp edge or something that you weren't expecting. You can always use the shape tool and you know add a square to cut that off. I don't need to on this one um, because it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just unlock this square and I'm going to make this my finish size, which is 8.25 by. 10.5 and that's just a personal preference. I'm storing those in my binder and I found that instead of making it eight and a half by 11, it fits a little better if I make it a little smaller and my gel plate is eight by 10. So as long as my design is eight by 10 and this inside part is eight by 10, then that's fine. So I'm gonna duplicate this command D and then make this one eight by 10, eight by 10. And then I'm going to select the other one and I'm going to align them to center and I'm going to go down to combine, subtract, and it's going to make my frame. Now I can select all, align to center, and now I have my perfect stencil except that for some reason, oh, I know what I needed to do. I need to make this my 8.25 by 10.5 and then select all, align to center, and that makes it fit into my frame perfectly, okay? Then go down to combine, unite, and now I have my stencil ready to cut. So that is just how to make some sort of organic drawing in Procreate with just the basic simplest learning how to use your pencil. So I'm gonna end this video and I'm gonna go right into another one so that hopefully it'll come up soon where I'm working with some other ideas for creating stencils in Procreate. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something, bye.